Let's talk about chlorine and chloramines and how they affect your microbes and how that affects your plants. But before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Recharge. If you want stronger, healthier plants, if you want bigger roots for better fruits, you gotta check out Real Growers Recharge. It's like an instant compost tea that holds more nutrients at your root zone, breaks those nutrients down, and makes them more plant available, getting more of your nutrients into your plants. Find out more about Recharge over at Real growers.com and while you're there use coupon code scotty420 to get 20 percent off your first order now let's get back to the show all right come on <laughs> all right come on hi c you ready to bust some myths here i am so i actually hear people talk about this a lot all the chemicals in the tap water sure and it's pretty trendy now to not drink tap water sure and so i'm wondering is it safe to water my plants with tap water it sure is. It's sure safe to drink it, too. You ever hang out with people from other countries and, like, you can drink the tap water? Oh. Yes. It's a, pre it's a pretty big thing. I grew up in California. You do not drink uh, the, the tap water there. I've had some water at some grows, and I've been like, it's 700 parts per million out of the tap. The guy goes, yeah, you got to chew it before you swallow it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Specifically, though, I yes. wanted to know about chlorine because I know there's a lot of chlorine. Sure. And you said chloramine? What's chloramine, chloramine? I think a chlorine mixed with ammonia or something. All I know about chlorine is it evaporates very quickly. That's why every few days you put it in your mm -hmm. pool again. They figured out a way. I thought it was chlorine and ammonia. I should have Googled that before. But uh, it's chloramine, and it doesn't leave. It'll stay there for a month. or It stays a long time in the water. So it theoretically could be a problem. In a high enough concentration, it could be a problem. Okay, so let's let's take it way back to sure. when I was a little kid. I remember my mom would always fill up her watering container the night before and let it sit overnight before she watered her plants. What's up with that? That's the chlorine. The chlorine will dissipate out. So okay. that, that just overnight, it's enough. Yes. Yep. And okay. by the way, you can go get, uh, just Google your municipality and a water test, and you can see what they are treating your water with. Gotcha. Okay, so let's let's talk about chlorine and why people are concerned about it in the first place. What is the reason, or what's the what's the deal with chlorine and soil microbes? <laughs> well, they use it to kill soil microbes. You know what I mean? Like chlorine, yeah. I mean, that's certainly what it's used for. What do they say, though? The dose makes the poison. Mm -hmm. So when they're, when they're putting, they'll put like the tiniest amount, less than we all have parts per million meters or total dissolved solid meters for checking mm -hmm. our, our uh, nutrients. Less than one part per million is what's normally in the municipal water. And what is, so it's just trying to keep like uh, scum from building up in the pipes. That's really all it's trying to do. It's not trying to disinfect. It's trying to keep scum from building up in those pipes. So it's a very small amount. Yeah, the water from my tap doesn't smell like water from like the pool. Yeah, do you know how, yes, <laughs> yes. And do you know how bad it'd be? We have microbes in our guts. We are the same microbiome system that is uh, responsible for plant growth. Uh, very similar is responsible for uh, nutrients being absorbed for us. So if we were drinking uh, tap water and it was killing our microbiome, we have friends. some problems. We'd notice. Okay, so generally, tap water, it's pretty safe levels. Yeah, it's less not going to do too much damage, but sometimes... I'll just give you an example. Less than one part per million in tap water. They did a study, a science, science study, and they took 65 parts per million of chlorinated water and dumped it into uh, uh, soil. And what they found is only the first six inches of soil were affected. Okay. Yeah, it... it uh, can only, it's, it surrounds the soil particle. What is it? bonds to the outside of the soil particle. Mm -hmm. So it just runs out. There's just not enough chlorine in there to, to, to do the job. Now, if there is too much chlorine, sure. so maybe, maybe I'm just scooping up pool water to pour on my yeah, plants. Yeah, don't do that. What's That'll it going to do? What's going to happen? That will kill your microbes. Chlorine okay. will kill microbes enough of it. Like I said, the dose makes the poison, though. Okay. Now let's switch gears a little bit uh -huh. and... Not talking about tap water, but talking about well water. Yeah. What's some of the issues that you might run into with well water? You got stuff in there that might necessarily not be good for your plants, or it's certainly going to mess up your the balance of your fertilizer and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I had six, I think it was like six to 700 parts per million of the well water coming out of Florida, where I was just like, and then... It was a lot of sodium. I was fairly close to the coast, so there was a lot of sodium in there. So I needed to get rid of that. Sodium's no good for plants. And then a lot of that stuff will 
take the place of nutrient. If you got 600 parts per million of whatever in there, how much room do you have for nutrition? Mm, okay. Uh, heavy metals and stuff like that is that also a concern yeah i mean you can certainly get dirty water or bad water with heavy metals in it um yeah there's different types of filtration for different problems all right so if i am taking water from a well sure uh what's your recommendation on getting some of that stuff out how do i do that start with a carbon filter if you know certainly get a water test for it you want to make sure you're not loaded with heavy metals uh but a carbon filter is uh would be a good that's going to pull out the chlorine or i guess you don't really have chlorine in the well it'll pull out whatever minerals you got in there if you got extra sodium okay. uh yeah and you were telling me that there's kind of like a more intense filtering that you can do but you might want to avoid yeah if you have really nasty water so if you have water that can be loaded with bacteria loaded with uh, pathogens like that Mm -hmm. you have to really clean this stuff up just to be h2o and nothing else so you would use a reverse osmosis water filter Mm -hmm. and I hate using those. I've had to use them. They literally make water a droplet at a time. It's the most, it uses this membrane that you have to replace all the time. Try to avoid using those if you can, just uh, as a last resort. They're very inefficient and a pain. Well, and you talk about growers overdoing things. Sometimes we overwater our plants. We overlove them. You can overclean your water. Yeah. Yeah, water is meant to have a little in it. It's supposed to have a little bit of calcium in there. It's a little bit of magnesium in there. Might even have a little sodium in there. Uh, we all, I keep on saying the dose makes the poison, though. To have 35 or 50 parts per million of dissolved solids in there. That's what they call them, TDS, or a PP, parts per million of total dissolved solids. So, yeah, a little bit of calcium or, or whatever in there. Um, that's going to give, that's what water's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be chemically pure and Mm -hmm. when you have chemically pure reverse osmosis water it acts weird there's nothing when you when you try to adjust the ph with a little ph up or ph down there's nothing for it to bond to so it just swings wildly so when you have i used to get like 35 parts per million out of some really great colorado water that's actually what it comes out at somewhere around there Mm -hmm. and it's just enough for when i put my ph up and ph down in there to attach to something Thing to stay in solution yeah otherwise it makes it really hard to balance your it pH does if you're just yeah with straight pure distilled water it does so it's a little bit uh you don't i don't like to use pure water if i can i'd like to use a carbon filter great solution hey but that's just my two cents on the matter what about you have you run into problems using tap water on your cannabis plants If so, how'd you fix the problem? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and check out the other couple videos YouTube's recommending. I hope you'll dig them.